What is up, girl bosses? Happy freaking Tuesday. How is everyone today? Just going to wait till a few of you guys pop on, even though I know that a bunch of you will watch the recording. I hope everyone's week is going fantastic. We are creeping up on whoo, mid-October already. Today is, what is that line on my phone? Oh, that's wonderful. Um, today is Tip Tuesday. So we are going to make this a regular thing. Every Tuesday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I will be jumping in here to share with you guys some fabulous tips live. I was actually going to go on Periscope the same time, but my amazing Archon mount needs tighter screws, so I think my iPad was going to fall out of it. You can't always have perfect tech. Hi, Suzanne. Hello, Tabitha. Welcome, welcome. Happy lunchtime, everybody. Hi, Terry. Thank you for joining. Say hi to everyone. Hi, Kristen. Welcome to everyone. Happy Tuesday. Rachel. I really miss Periscope. How many of you are still Periscoping on a regular basis or watching Periscopes? Hey, girl. Hey. Hey, Andrea. Brittany, all my SSG viewers are in the house. Hi, Whitney. Love seeing you guys. We're going to, um, I promise, I've, over the next three months, I've made going live in Social Super Group one of my um, top priorities for you guys. Because, again, for those of you that don't know me, my name to everyone is Jilly Sue. I've been in the direct sales industry for about 15 years now. I've been with my current company for seven and a half years now. I am uh, top level with them. Love it, love it, love it. And when I first started in social, when I first started in direct sales, I worked a full-time job as a compliance director and turned into their social media strategist. And I was with that company for 14 years. During that time, I wanted to be my own boss and do what I wanted to do, but I couldn't afford to leave my job. And so I started intertwining social media when MySpace first came out into direct sales. That's how I'm here. And I was lucky enough to have an amazing company who paid for incredible mentors. Um, the one that most of you know, Kim Gar, is still my mentor today um, and amazing and pretty much taught me everything I know. So today we're going to make this tip Tuesday. I know for my particular team, uh, Tuesday is team training day. That is one of the first things I'm going to share with you guys besides a bunch of tips on how to make your Facebook groups amazing. And that is to get consistent. If you don't show up and if you are not with your teams and showing them that you're doing the work and doing everything that they need to be doing, then they won't show up either. So we're going to talk about really two types of groups interchangeably. Um, for me, my team, my mastermind clients, I teach them to not only have a team page, even after they've recruited two people, you want to bring your teams together. I don't, it doesn't matter if you have one person, two people, 10 people, a thousand people. If you want to have a team that stays together and you build that community and you build a tribe, you want to have a team page immediately. Good morning, Karen, especially if they're in a downline that's way bigger. Some of you might say, well, what do I post in there? You just stay connected. You help them with things that they might not know. It gives them a safe place where they won't get lost in other groups. They can ask questions. You can start building a buddy system so that when new people come on board, you just slowly want to build that tribe. Will there be a lot of engagement right away? Absolutely not. Um, and absolutely, you can invite mentors. Someone just said, you know, I think I may invite my upline. Absolutely. You can ask your upline if they'd like to be a member in there. And that way you can cheer them on, guys. We know in this business that you want to recognize what you want repeated. And what better way to do that than in a team page for your um, downline. And even my SSGU clients, those are the people in my mastermind, said, I only have one person. I only have two people. If you bring one person into that group and you guys start building your community, it's going to get thicker than thieves. And that is the best way to keep building that tribe and building that tribe. Teams that play together stay together. And so when you make that group page a safe place for people to go and it's organized, it's almost a meeting ground, which I'm going to share with you guys a bunch of tips that I typed out last night 
um, to help you make your groups a little bit more organized, a place that you tell yourself that you need to be in there every single day like clockwork. I see tons of groups that have three, 4,000 people in them of a downline, and the person that started it is barely in there, barely engaged, um, doesn't really post, stops in every now and then to read some things. If you start a group for your team or your VIP people, then I highly suggest that you commit to that group, that you tell yourself, every day I need to be in here. Every day I need to be posting something. It's a training ground. It's a community. It's a place where people can go to ask questions, feel safe, get what they need to grow their business. So um, one of the first things that when you, what you want to do um, when you're starting your groups is decide whether you want them either a public group, decide what you want them to be. Is it going to be a public group, a closed group, or a secret group? Now, for your team pages and even your VIP pages, I highly suggest, um, you know, maybe not your team pages, but they're a closed group. Public, you're going to have, you know, if you wanted a, a, a VIP page for your customers, that's going to have to be private and closed anyway, because if you're posting particular things, you don't want everyone to see. So most of the time, all of my groups are closed. Occasionally, I put them secret, um, but that just makes it a little bit more difficult when you're adding people in. So the best one is to be as closed. Um, if it's public, anyone can see the groups, its members, and its posts. Not very many are public. Um, if it's closed, anyone can find the group and see who's in it, but they can only see the members' posts. That's the one that's the easiest. It's the easiest when you have a team page because you can tell people, hey, just look for this page. Um, mine's called the Wickless Sparklers, so they just search for that and they can find it. A secret group, only the members can find the post and um, find the group and see posts. A lot of mentors have their team pages as secret and they just add people as they go along. That stops you from have, having all kinds of other consultants in there. Um, or wanting to join. I don't add anyone unless they're added by someone that's already in the group. That makes it easier because I don't really have time to go and check everybody. And in my VIP group, same way. Um, I don't allow consistent consultants in my VIP group. It's a place, um, if I do have consultants in there, it's only a few of my, um, a few of my front line. And my whole mentality is of that is if I train them how to do a VIP group, then they can train their people. You don't want your whole team in your VIP group. You want it to be exclusive. And I hope everyone understands the difference of what I'm talking about. Your team page is for your downline. Your VIP group is for your VIP customers, hostesses, family members, friends, potential consultants. That's your exclusive group. That is an amazing group to have. I'll tell you guys this year when I committed to my VIP group, um, I'm probably going to have, I have 13 tote parties out, uh, two fundraisers, and my PRV is probably going to be well over $6,000 this month just from a VIP group, just from a VIP group. That is not counting any home parties that I've booked. Um, that is just from working my business using my VIP group, and that VIP group only has about 130 people in it. That is always my advice to you guys. You don't need to be everywhere all over the internet. You need to take care of the customers that have already decided that you are going to be their consultant and that you know they're going to be loyal to you. If you take care of them and you spoil them and you give them exclusives and samples and catalogs first, they're going to be in that VIP group like clockwork. Um, every time I get an order in, last night I went live in my VIP group. I had five or six things that I got that were new from the catalog. I showed them up close and personal. A few things, I didn't even think that they were as nice as they were, and I got to show my VIPs, and this morning I woke up to three orders. So when people can see you on video, and we're going to talk about that a little bit, when they can see you on video and see you in your groups, when your team can see you, it makes all the difference in the world. Last year I was struggling trying to hit my 500 PRV, 500 in sales, and this year to be working my VIP group and have over probably 6,000 in PRV with um, 16 new recruits in the last two months and four fundraisers, a bunch of home parties only from working a VIP group, highly recommended to any of you that are allowed to have them that you should have a VIP group. Um, you want to create clear rules in any group that you start. And I wrote this down. The rules should state the do's and don'ts of your group. It's something that I want you guys to remember. Any group that you start is your group. Now, it shouldn't be like, these are my rules. Get the heck out. You can't be here. 
But in order for people to join, there should be a clear list of do's and don'ts. Um, and I say that, don't be a stick in the mud with this, but just make everything clear. For example, you may want to ask members not to post links to their websites. Um, you guys know, same as in Social Supergroup, we don't allow any marketing of any type whatsoever. It's clearly stated in the rules. And what I've done in Social Supergroup is I have a link to all of the rules or guidelines of the groups, and I have a video welcoming everybody. That is something that I highly suggest in your team page and your VIP group. That's going to welcome people. It's going to let people see who you are. It needs to be clear and concise. I always like to pin the rules to the top so it's the first thing people see. And it says it right there. I've actually typed out all the guidelines to Social Supergroup. In my team page, I've done things a little bit differently where it says at the very top, welcome to the Wickless Sparkler team page. And I put new consultants start here and I put everything a new consultant needs so that any new consultant that's coming aboard, the first thing that they see is that pinned post in your group page. If it's a VIP page, I suggest the same thing. That pinned post should have everything a new person needs to see and it should have the guidelines, it should have where they should go for contact information, it should put what you expect in there, it should have guidelines as far as no negativity. You've been in other groups before and what I would suggest is find a few groups that you're in, look at their guidelines, put it in a Word doc and and try to uh, and reword it into your own words so that it comes from you. You don't want to copy other people's pages or other people's groups. You want it to be authentic. You want it to be something that people know. This is her group and you need to stick by that. I'm a huge stickler when it comes to uh, marketing. I've said it over and over again, social super group and even um, my team page, of course, there's no cross marketing on your team pages. There are no marketing zone. And if you jump in the group and post something that's a marketing or advertising post, they, you will be deleted. And most of the time, if it doesn't look like a mistake, then you'll be immediately blocked from the group. There's no, we don't want to be in there to be, be to be marketed to. We know what we know what these the, what the group is for by reading the guidelines. The guidelines state exactly in your group what they're there for, and that's what people expect. So you don't want to have a VIP page where other people come in and start schlepping all their Etsy stuff and their jams and their soaps and everything else. Put your guidelines at the top of the page, write clear and concise, and stick with it. Then the next thing you guys want to do is if there is a problem, whether it's your team page or whatever, take it private. You never want to post and kind of out somebody in your group. You never want to put in there, hey, you can't post this or hey, that's bad. You know, just let the admin know and then the admin can send a private message saying, hey, I don't know if you knew, but this is a, pri this is a no marketing zone. You want to make sure that people know what they're going to get from the group and you want to stick to that point blank. Of course, we all know the number one rule in groups, do not add people without their permission. I would even say that goes for your new consultants, guys. I always say, hey, congratulations, welcome aboard, let's get on the phone. I talk to them on the phone, then I let them know, I'm gonna add you to the team page so that you can have all the support and everything you need. It's the biggest foo -pa in direct sales, and that is why so many of us are getting a bad name. I can't even tell you how many people that I mentor in social media that still add me to parties and groups, even though I drill it into their head. Do not add people to groups without their permission. I have to tell you guys, there's plenty of direct sellers. I love to buy from direct sellers. I will buy from direct sellers first before I go into the mall or the store. But if someone adds me to a group without my permission, even if I have 14 consultants of the same company, I won't buy from them. I think it's, it's disrespectful and you know, you wouldn't want someone just slapping their goods in your face as soon as you walk into a store. Same idea, you don't want to be added to groups. And I would say the same thing. Remember, even though we're in our direct sales bubble, everyone, and we know what this is all about, we know what it does, we know how this works, new people don't. So you have to remember a new consultant that's never done this before, if you just add them into a group and all of these posts start coming up about how to run your business and where to go here and what to go there, they're like, whoa, I don't even have a clue what I'm doing. So just make sure that they know hey, I'm going to add you to my team page. Seems simple. It seems to us like it's obvious, but we have to remember one of the first things that new consultants do is they get their kit and then they're immediately overwhelmed, especially if 
you're just starting out or they're just starting out and all of this, all their upline is sending them stuff and they're getting YouTube pages and all of this stuff. They're completely overwhelmed and they say to themselves, I can't do this. I can't be like her or him. I'm not like them. I don't know what this is all about. There's 5,000 people in this group. What am I in for? Just let them know that you're going to be adding them to a support community. At the top of my team page, guys, I have a pinned post and I'll actually... Um, pull it up right here so I can see. The pin post has all of my favorite links on my team page. So the pin post is like the Bible. And one of the first things that it says, I'm reading directly from my team page, it says, welcome to our team page. If you are new, this post will serve as your starting place for full of, and full of great resources for your business. If you have been with us a while or you've re just recently reinstated, here is lots of inf info which will serve as a great refresh refresher. Then it immediately says new consultants start here. And then I have a link to um, my team custom album of walking them through exactly what they do. A welcome video from our founders. I have a new consultant checklist with a link to it. I have a YouTube video on how to navigate the team page. And then I have all of my favorite consultant groups. So I don't just add them to my uplines groups. I post all the groups like my two uplines groups. This social super group, I post a flyers group, um, some, some swag for my company, um, how to make samples, a Facebook parties group, and then my favorite YouTubers I put on my team page so that they can pick and choose what they want to be put into. If you just start adding them to all these groups and, and videos and all of this stuff, they have no idea what's going on. And you need to kind of let them know where all the information is, put it in one particular place, also at the bottom at that, of that pinned post, I have a link to a Dropbox folder and every file that I use from labels to party letters to everything that I use in my business is in that Dropbox folder. So all of my team, member, team members have access to that Dropbox folder. So it's literally, so it starts out new consultants, how to navigate the team page, all of the, all of the uh, websites, all of the Facebook groups that I'm in that I suggest to them, all of my favorite YouTubers, and then a link to my personal Dropbox. Well, it's separate from mine. I have one just for my team and everything that I use. That is going to save you guys time on, hey, can I have those labels? Hey, can I have that flyer? Hey, can I have that letter? Everything I use is in my Dropbox, and it's all labeled by fundraisers, parties, whatever the case may be. Everything is right in there. That is going to save you so much time on doing private messages and emails on folders and sending them here and sending them there. You say it's right in the Dropbox folder. And then you get really consistent with getting on Facebook Live like this and teaching them where to go. As you teach a bunch of your consultants where to go in your group and it becomes accustomed to them, they're going to teach everybody else. In fact, I'm a member of some of my downlines groups and they're saying, go to the pinned post on Jill's page. Go to the pinned post on Jill's page. Remember, when you teach people where to go instead of doing, them for, doing it for them, they're going to become much stronger leaders, which in turn is going to take some of the weight off you from having to take on everybody. Your goal is to teach leaders and teach leaders and create leaders and create leaders so that everything keeps trickling down. And it all starts, if Facebook is the main page for your group to go to, you want to make it like a well-oiled machine. You don't want to have to have them running all over the place and this group and that group. The only reason they're going to different groups from my Facebook group is there's groups specifically for things that I don't put all the time in my group, such as, you know, my company swag. There's, there's, there's a girl that does swag just for us. Shirts, hats, jackets, whatever. I'm not going to post that every time I find it. I'm going to lead them to the Sensi group, the, the group that does that. Flyers. There's a girl that just does all flyers for our company. Here's the group that does that so that you don't have to post them that stuff all the time. Find all your favorite groups, link it in your pinned post. Let that be the hub of where they go. The pinned post is worth a bazillion dollars because it's going to save you so much time showing people where to go and where to find stuff and emailing everyone. Highly suggest that you guys write this stuff down. If you have to watch this again, go back through and then go start cleaning up your groups to make sure that they don't have to search for everything to find everything. Um, to build engagement, ask open-ended questions with your, with your members. I'm always asking polls, you know, and I always tell them I'll do a poll that says something to the effect of besides booking parties and recruiting, 
what are some things that you'd like to learn? What are some things you'd like us to touch on? And I'll give them answers like fundraisers, social media, Instagram, um, YouTube, whatever the case may be, live streaming. What would you like to learn? And then whatever, whatever poll answer wins, that's what I'll teach the next week. Ask them questions, get them engaged. Um, Another thing that's been working and that I've started to doing, doing is I've added, added them all to a text service, and that way I can text them news and things that are happening. I think it's, um, I can get it for you guys and post it in the group. I think it's three cents a text, but if they opt in as an active team member and they're in the group page, it's worth the three cents. If I can remind them of things and let them know things and stay in communication with them, it's worth all its weight in gold. Um, of course, save yourself time and schedule your group post. You can schedule group posts, absolutely. This comes along with deciding what your branding is going to be in your group and creating a theme. And what I mean by theme is getting in the habit or taking a piece of paper and writing Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, every day of the week. Figure out what you want those days to be. Is it Selfie Sunday? Is it Social Media Monday? Is it Motivational Tuesday? Is it Tip Tuesday? What, is it a Winning Wednesday? Figure out what you want those to be. Use something easy like Pick Monkey or Canva. Um, you know, think out of the box. It could be um, Spirit Leader Thursday. You know, who are your most spirit leaders? Whatever the case may be. You can create those graphics easily in something like Pick Monkey or Canva. Then once those are done, you can schedule them in Post My Planner, um, post party, uh, yeah, post my party, post planner. I use Scent Share. Those theme days you can schedule every day and you can have them scheduled to be posted to your group early in the morning, like 7 a.m. Even if that's posted from a scheduler, it still subconsciously tells your team, hey, she's here. She's here because she's going to get the notification. She's going to see that I'm posting. She's going to see who's active. That will help you guys post to your groups every single day. I suggest that for your VIP groups as well. I loved my Relax VIP group. I post, you know, when boxes come, when I'm doing samples, um, you know, when I'm running out of stuff and I make funny faces. I make it really relaxed, but I'm in there every single day. It's a, it's a smaller group, so it's way easier to manage. But with your team posts, I highly suggest that you sit down tonight and you can post besides these, but I would come up with a theme day every day. And I change mine all the time. Sometimes it's Selfie Sunday. Sometimes it's, it's, uh, it's uh, Social Media Monday or Motivational Monday. And then I create graphics around those. Then I use SyncShare, schedule them in. And then I post on top of those. But at least at 7.30 a.m. every, sometimes I have a daily tip. Sometimes I have um, a live stream challenge like I've done in this group. But all of that stuff is pre-done on Sunday nights or, if I, or two weeks in advance so that every day your team will wake up to a post in the group and they know, hey, she's here. She, they, they're not really thinking, oh, she scheduled that. They're thinking, wow, she scheduled that. Like she has all of her stuff together and she is making sure that she's here and consistent every day in the group. Super important. Um, make sure that... You are promoting and introducing members to one another. It's your job to be the connector in your group. So that's, it's super important for you guys to realize that if you're going to start a group, that you're the connector, you're the admin. What that means is you're going to have a stronger community or tribe if you see yourself as a connector and say, okay, I have a group of a thousand people in here. I'm going to add a new person and I need to connect them to that group. Once you're the connector, the connector makes it stronger, right? The connector is like that piece on a bolt that screws it together, and then you add the next person, you screw it together, and you add the next person, you screw it together. If those connectors aren't there, it's just a bunch of people hanging out that don't really know each other. It's a great way to explain it. So what you need to do is if train your, train your directors and train the new people and you train them by doing this them yourself, is welcome every new person, every reinstatement, everyone that's coming back to the group. You welcome them, cheer them on, let them know, hey guys, this is so-and-so. She's been with our company before. She's coming back. She's so excited. You connect them into your group. If you just, if you just tell people you're going to add them, add them in, and then there's never any connection, people stay loose. And what you need to do is tighten up those screws on each person you connect because if they can make a connection to another person in the group, 
your group, your VIP group even, but your team group is going to get tighter and tighter and tighter. Every single person within your group is going to have a common denominator. And when you make those connectors super tight, and especially why my, my sales and my recruiting has gone so high up this month is because I've done that in my VIP group. One way or the other, the people that I'm adding know someone from my hometown or they know someone in the group or what happens is, is I say, oh, Katrina had a great tote party this month. She did so amazing. She got X, Y, Z in sales and she did this and this and this. And someone else will jump on and go, Katrina, you look familiar. Where are you from? Or, oh, you did a tote party? What is that? How easy is that? Oh, I want to do one. They start connecting. But if you just drop people in a group and you never be the connector, you just have a bunch of people, the, the, the group never gets any tightness. The tribe never starts building and never connecting. You are the connector. If you start a group, you need to make sure that you keep them tight and you, you keep connecting everybody and you train your directors to do the same thing. Even if they have their own team page, you welcome everybody. You cheer everybody on. You show recognition. You must show up in that group page every single day, whether you have a leadership page and then a general community page. If you've got five pages, you need to connect Five, you need to be in five pages. That means you need to schedule, get more consistent. I cannot stress enough consistency in these groups. If you don't show up, there's something that happens if you don't show up. In their mind, if you're not in the group doing something, whether it's a tidbit, a trick, live streaming, something, they think you're not working your business. And if you're not working your business, then your team members will start doing the same thing. They'll mirror exactly what you do. Um, same thing goes for your VIP page. Your VIP community, your customers, your hostesses, your potential team members, they will look for another consultant if you're not actively in your group because in their mind, you're not really a consultant. You're not really working their business because they don't see you. So, so many of you guys want to do this stuff using social media, but you have to remember the key to YouTube and live streaming and working your business online and finding people everywhere is they have to see you. So all of you that are sitting out there going, I am not live streaming, I am not YouTubing, you're gonna have a little bit more of a difficult time because people can't see where you live, they can't see who you are, they can't hear your voice, they can't see your eyes. They want to know that they can know, like, and trust, trust you. So we talked about that, promoting. Um, choose a group, write a great intro to the group, make sure the about section says exactly what they'll get from the group. Um, I said before, share your resources by uploading Word documents, PDFs, and Im images. This I wrote directly in the group, but I really like putting them into a Dropbox file. Dropbox is way easier to maintain. Facebook is just a mess when it comes to files and documents. And so I have a bunch of older stuff, stuff that's still relevant in my files and my Facebook groups. But for the most part, I keep them in a Dropbox folder and then I can control the Dropbox folder from wherever I am and I can update that as I need to. Um, I said this before, dedicate a day of the week to a, for a certain topic. Um, you can share your goals on Monday, tip Tuesday. You guys can think of anything. Think of out of the box, but you should really do something like that in your VIP group. Maybe not every day in there. But you could do, I like show my goodies Tuesday or Monday, show my goodies, and I'm hoping my boxes come by then, and then I show them new stuff. I do um, tip Tuesday for them a lot of times. I'll do a recipe Wednesday. You guys can do all kinds of stuff. You just have to take some time, get a notebook, think about it, and then just create graphics, easy graphics. Create a solid background, and then just put tip Tuesday on it and put your website at the bottom. That easy. You save it on your desktop, you upload it to your pages, Easy breezy. Consistency will win every single time. Um, if you're going to have admins, which I strongly suggest that you do, whether it's another director or someone that can help you that you trust, um, then I would suggest that you choose them wisely and make sure that they're going to actually help you in the group. I have some admins for almost all of my groups. I'm the one that adds people, but what I really have them do and what is most important to me right now in all of my groups is they serve as lookouts and they watch for any problems or marketing or X-rated stuff that someone jumps in and posts or negativity within your team. I'm happy to say, guys, I've never had negativity on my team page. 
not one time. And that is because I make it very clear that anything that's negative or that needs to be dealt with is dealt with in private. And as far as social supergroup, um, I know plenty of other social media groups that have extreme negativity and people just allowed to post whatever they want or kind of poo-pooing on people or just nasty to other people. I don't have any tolerance for that. Um, I'm pretty open to as far as people learning in my groups and doing whatever, but as far as people negative to other people or reacting badly to other people or talking down to them or any just ickiness, then I don't have that in my groups at all. And in seven and a half years, I've never had one ounce of negativity on my team page. Even when we've had back orders, even when the company's decided something that they didn't like, even when they've done something, you know, someone has done something that not everyone agreed with, they have never posted it on my team page. And that is because I've set the standard right away. Um, and I wrote on here too, you need to intervene early. If you see something going the wrong way, you need to start deleting those posts and do a private message right away and say, hey girl, I see that you're frustrated. I completely understand. I'm happy to help you any way I can. Let's just do it privately. Um, because you know, we have a lot of new people joining the page and they're not, they're not up to par or they they don't even know half the stuff that's going on. And I would rather help you this way so that if your team members run into a problem that you can help them. And it's just a public team page is not a place for it. It's just easy breezy. And if you set the guidelines right away, you might have one or two people that don't agree with you. And then you say, well, then probably this team page isn't for you because it's just not going to be a place where we slam the company or slam other consultants, or it's just not the icky committee ever, ever. Um, themes we talked about, build community, ask people we talked about, and of course, you guys all should get on a schedule, just like I am in Social Super Group, because I've been promising you we're going to start off with every Tip Tuesday. Jilly Sue will be going live in here at 1 o'clock, so that you guys know, and next week I'll have Periscope up. Next week, no matter what, you know that I'll be in here 1 o'clock um, every single week. That's what you need to do on your team page. For my team page... I do 9 o'clock Tuesday night. Every single Tuesday, we do our power hour. Um, it is the best way to communicate with people. They can tag people. They can, they can do whatever they want. You don't need a webinar service to jump into your group. Um, you can do shout-outs. It records the whole thing. You can save the broadcast. You can post it. You could repost this to YouTube if you wanted to post your power hours to YouTube, which is a great way to recurate content. Um, and so I highly recommend that. And I have my schedule every single week in my day designer when I'm going live, where, where I'm going to be going live. So I know that now Tuesdays at 1 o'clock, I'll be in Social Super Group. Uh, Tuesday night at 9 o'clock, I'm on my team page live. Wednesdays at 9 o'clock, I'm with my, all the people in Social, uh, <laughs> social Super Group Master uh, Ultimates. What am I doing today? I can't even speak. Um, <laughs> Everyone's in there at 9 o'clock. And then you can add on from there. My VIP group is a little bit more relaxed. I haven't picked a set time because usually around 7 or 8 at night is the best time to go live in there. Um, but you should go live every single week at least once in all of your groups so that people can see you and they can see that you love your business and they can see what you're passionate about. Um, yeah, I don't know what my problem is. I clearly need lunch or something. And for those of you that don't know what Social Super Group Ultimates is, it's this group on steroids. What we do in there is give you specifics, how to set up your group, what to type in there, when to post, how to do graphics. Now we're on YouTube. We did Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat. We keep going back through everybody, everything. Um, how to do graphics, what to do, what is personal branding. It's this group but with specifics of exactly how to do that. And so if you guys, and we have some people that are going on two years that have been in the mastermind with me, and it is not only just social media, it is confidence boosters on 10. Um, it, is a, it is a way of life, actually, rather than just a training. It helps people from not spending a bazillion dollars on eBooks and everything you could possibly think of that you don't need to spend money on. Um, and if you're interested in that, you guys can message me after, or there's a unicorn post in this group with a link and you guys can get the $5 trial. It's a $5 trial for, for a month and you can jump in and just see if you like that. I did that for all of you guys because so many of these programs charge you 30, 40, 50, 60, a hundred, $200 a month. 
And this is $5 for the first month. If you don't like it, you can get out. If you want to stay in, it's $32 a month. You get live webinars every week. It saves you. It shortens the learning curve for you. It is everything that I could ever have wanted and more. Right now, we do everything within Facebook, but the website will be going live right after this webinar. I have to make a list for the web designer of stuff I want changed still. Um, but it's, it's amazing. I love the group, and it's just worth it to try it. So you will be getting some tips and tricks in here. These just give you the basics. We don't give you the specifics. Um, but I would highly recommend that you watch this again. Go back through and clean up your groups. Get a pin post in there. Check some other groups. Um, see what they're doing. Get that pin post at the top so that your new consultants know exactly where to go. And your VIP groups, put exactly what they can expect in your VIP groups. Make sure that you're asking people um, before they want to join. Get consistent. And today, right now, to help you guys practice on your lives sitting up straight, talking into the camera, not being so nervous. We're challenging you to a Facebook Live. Two to three minutes, jump in here, give your best direct sales tip. Every week I'll change it and you guys can practice so that you can get a little bit more confident on screen. So I'm committing every week, Tip Tuesday. I'll be in here at one o'clock for 30, 30 minutes or so. I'll give you guys some basics to stuff that I use in my business. And then if you want to take the plunge and come on over and into the unicorn field, you can check out that post or message me um, after this and get any questions you have answered. So you guys are awesome. Make sure all your team members are in this group. It is a free freaking community where they can ask questions and get everything that they need right in here. One of the best groups for social media for direct sales. That is for sure, I have to say. Whatever. I'm honest. Um, so I'll see you guys next week, 1 o'clock. You're awesome, and we hope that you love the group. So sick, no lives need to, no lives need to lay flat. Oh, I'm sorry, Terry. I hope you feel better. If you guys have any questions, you can post right below this post when we get off, and I'm happy to answer any of those. And if you want to go jump in Ultimates, come try it out. We'd love to have you. So I'll see you guys next week. Hope this helped. Bye.